Morning, 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 how's everyone going? My name's Dad Ron, I'm an Australian VTuber, and today I'm going to be giving my review of Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. So a little background for how I came upon this game. I was browsing Facebook one day and saw an article basically saying that Monster Hunter 2 is not just a Pokemon clone. And my thought, ironically enough, was Pokemon clone on PC? Hell yes. So I figured I'd check it out. I've heard of the Monster Hunter games before. Um, I'm pretty sure I've watched a couple reviews for Monster Hunter World, but that was a while ago. I can't remember anything. Um, and I was aware of them back in the PlayStation days. I had a... Um, one of those uh, PlayStation guides that included a Monster Hunter game. Um, so that's why I uh, wanted to look at the game. And I looked at the price, saw on Steam it's 100 Australian dollars. Thought, wow, that is very pricey. I don't know if I want this game. And then I saw there was a trial version, a demo. You don't see ma many of those these days. And I looked up online how long, how much that demo covers, and it's the first five to six hours of gameplay. And that fits in with my experience. I played five and a half uh, hours of the demo. So this here is going to be a review of the demo specifically. Um, I have yet to continue on but I do plan to next weekend. Um, so I'm going to... I plan to play the entire game, um, provided I don't get bored during it. This specifically is a review of the demo. First thing, it was a ton of fun. I absolutely enjoyed it. Like I said, I will be continuing on to the full version of the game. Your progress in the demo is saved, which you can then transfer into the full version of the game. Uh, I love that. I think massive props to Capcom a for providing a demo that is five and a half hours of gameplay and B for allowing you to then transfer that experience through to the full game. Uh, it, like I said, is essentially a Pokemon clone. But instead of just having your standard uh, elemental rock, paper, scissors, you've got overlapping layers of rock, paper, scissors. You have speed, power, and technical type attacks, and each monster you use will have a preference towards one of those. Then you personally fight alongside your monster, unlike Pokemon, where you can use a... Um, stabbing a uh, blunt or a piercing weapon so essentially that amounts to sword hammer or uh, bow and then you also have different types of elemental attacks so fire poison all that and all three of these come together with each monster having a resistance and a weakness to one type of attack to one uh, sort of type of weapon and to different uh, elements. It's very easy to understand, I uh, uh, but it does add a level of complexity within the demo itself. It doesn't get too complicated. I do imagine things get a bit harder later on. Um, but it was complicated enough that it was fun without uh, becoming challenging or um, annoying. The other mechanics did tend to be a bit um, obscured. So one thing I found out while I was there, um, in your main city, there is a quest board. And I initially went, oh, I only want to accept so many of these at once, which was not the right decision. On the quest board, you should just accept all quests 
uh, as you go about your adventures you'll automatically complete some of them that's not obvious that's not explained anywhere um, so the next thing is genes I have no idea how the genealogy in the game works it looks to be a big part of the game every time you hatch a monster it um, it tells you what their genealogy is um, shows you a nice little diamond graph of um, what what their genes affects but n at no point is this really explained to the player I feel like this is very much an example where you then have to go online and find out for yourself how this actually works it would have been great if that was explained in game now the story the story is fairly basic um, I won't spoil too much but I will just say there's an opening sequence that basically sets it up um, a a wild Rathalos gets scared um, your grandfather who is named Red and I found that very interesting because Red was of course the original Pokemon protagonist uh, I suspect Red was also the protagonist of Monster Hunter Stories 1 but I haven't confirmed that I do hope to eventually go back and play Monster Hunter Stories 1 essentially I believe there was a lot of lore from the previous game that I was missing out on but the opening uh, cutscene did a good job of explaining a fairly standard story where Red's Rathalos has been living on its own and it gets scared off and we've essentially now got to live up to Red's legacy the story beats after that generally fairly basic it's enough to be entertaining um, it's not going to be Shakespeare it's not going to be Citizen Kane but it's entertaining for a children's game um, the game itself worked well um, apart from one fairly major bug so when I did my first stream um, of about three hours I had no bugs whatsoever as soon as I started my second stream the game kept having a frame lag so essentially what was happening was it would run fine for say three to five seconds and then there would be a half second pause it would run fine for three to five seconds and then there would be a half second pause and this happened both within the village and within the overworld um, I tried turning down the settings I tried uh, playing with a variety of different things none of that worked eventually I restarted the game twice and then it worked so that does look like um, I also tried doing some stuff that Google told me the first time I thought uh, that might have been what fixed it the second time I didn't do any of that additional stuff I just restarted the game and it did uh, look to work so there is that issue I don't know what's causing it I don't know if there will be a fix um, but it's something that based on Google people have been experiencing uh, the other th big thing was while trying to fix that issue I turned my game settings down to minimum and I got a very strange um, graphical bug where shadows essentially appeared as lines across the screen um, it looked odd it didn't really affect gameplay it was just quite distracting the only other thing I think I need to mention is the cutscenes I loved the uh, story mode cutscenes uh, the humor was good like I said quite childish but it was fine the um, in battle cutscenes did start to get a bit repetitive so each monster actually that's one thing I should mention I'll uh, come back to that after each um, each monster 
has a certain uh, kinship skill, which results in an in-game uh, or in-battle cutscene. These work quite well. They're very varied. Anything from the explosion of the... Uh, now I'm going to have to try and remember uh, the monster names. That is one very difficult thing. Uh, the yeah, explosion, acid rain... Uh, Velocirush, there's a ton of different ones, each monster has its own uh, kinship skill and the animations for these are great. For, for um, your ally, uh, during the first uh, few hours of gameplay, she uses one monster. So almost every battle, she's doing the same animation, it does get uh, quite... Um, repetitive. That said, I won't spoil too much, but there are indications you will have other battle buddies throughout the game. Um, like I said, it would have been nice to have your uh, ally during the first part switch up Monsies halfway through, and that would have um, just created a bit of variation, but it's hard to complain when I'm guessing I've played probably 10% of the game and we will see a lot more variation in the future. For, so the final thing going to be the term monsty. It's something I've seen a lot of people complain about online. I have to imagine this is related to a Japanese transliteration. So I'm sure to Japanese natives the term monsty sounds like a cute English based uh, thing. It sounds very, very odd in English. Um, in the end, I just put it down to it's a kid's game that has been translated from Japanese. Monsty is a very silly term. Whatever, I can ignore it. So overall, my impression of the game was very good. I have absolutely enjoyed the demo. I compliment Capcom on the fact that they have done the demo. It is a good experience. It gives a it's not just one or two missions, it's the first five and a half hours of gameplay and the game itself has been very enjoyable so far with some very good hints that uh, things will continue to be enjoyable. Uh, thank you for watching. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, and I will see you later.